The Philippines Airlines, also known as PAL, is regarded as the flag carrier of the Philippines. It is amongst the oldest commercial airlines in the Asian continent and was once touted as one of Asia's largest airline companies. However, the rise of Philippines Airlines was not about a successful story. Rather, it is filled with challenges and problems that forced the entire story to go from being one of Asia's leading carriers to falling against the tides of competition and in the last few years having to declare Chapter 11 bankruptcy. However, once regarded as a leading airline in Asia, it is now one of its biggest losers. Throughout its life, it has experienced challenge after challenge which made the entire Philippine airline company fall. In the last few years, the company had gone into Chapter 11 in bankruptcy, citing challenges to the company. To understand the entire story of Philippine Airlines, we must go back to the very beginning of the company, back in 1941. At a time when the world's economy was falling short due to several implications led by the war, it was officially founded on February 26 by top businessmen in the country. One of these entrepreneurs is a man named Andre Soriano who even to this very day is still renowned as a genius. He played a role in growing San Miguel Corporation and his corporation known as Anscor, which still exists today. With such a background and a healthy amount of capital, Andres and his team brought Philippine Airlines to heights never seen by the Philippine economy. Philippine Airlines' growth in just five short years enabled the company to access first mover advantage. By 1946, five years after its official inception, it became the first country in the entire Asian continent to even cross the Pacific Ocean, headed all the way to California. This earmarked the beginning of the massive inflow of air travelers between the United States and the Philippines. And even by 1951, the Philippine Airlines would reach out to its neighboring East Asian nation to lease some of its commercial airplanes, which would eventually establish Japan's own national airlines, known as Japan Airlines. From 1957 to 1965, the company continuously grew. They increased their destinations, number of fleets, and road modernization. At the beginning of 57, they had received only 160 million in revenue passenger traffic. But by 65, they registered over 729 million. Massive growth in less than a decade. However, air travel growth would soon slow as competition and political instability catches up in the Philippines between the end of the 1960s and the end of the 1980s. Due to domestic issues, the economy did not pick up, and it also slowed down the growth of Philippine Airlines. Fast forward to the dawn of the 21st century, the economy of the Philippines has then picked up as it looks forward to massive reforms. Philippine Airlines was not missed. It again was presented with this opportunity to be a leading carrier once again, a name that it lost. In 1995, a businessman by the name of Lucio Tan stepped up to make that happen by becoming the single largest shareholder of the company. He became the CEO and chairman of PAL. Expectations were looming high. The new owner was equipped with a strong business background and he sought to make Philippine Airlines one of Asia's best within three years. They planned over $4 billion to modernize everything, from new aircraft to other programs. Their purchases after purchases of new aircraft were so huge that they were the first airline in the entire world to have the full range of new generation Airbus aircraft. However, despite enormous potential, this was not sustainable. Their purchases of massive airlines in the beginning were presumably due to the expectation that the country's economy and demand for air travel would grow. People were getting rich here and there, slowly but surely. But in 1997, the Asian financial crisis hit. Business after business would collapse and many had gone bankrupt, impacting the strategies that should have made Philippine Airlines once again a leading carrier. This forced the company to lay off thousands of its workforce and a shutdown of the entire operation on September 23, 1998, one that would prolong for 14 days due to several issues and disputes. It was only until October 7th of 1998 that the company returned back to normal, but financial issues were still there. It held a huge amount of debt, and demand for its services was limited. 
Hence, after a few years of initiating its so-called revolutionary plan, the company had gone into a rehabilitation phase, a recovery that would enable the company to fix its underlying issues related to debt and operations to ensure that it would not go into bankruptcy. After just a very short amount of time, the company was able to succeed in making a profit. By 2000, the company posted 44.2 million pesos and a year later, another net profit of over 419 million pesos. Things were picking up and the dreams that once died are now alive. Fast forward to 2006, the company had bounced back once more. As the only leading player in the country and local competition being insignificant, their opportunities were huge. Hence, it took little to no time for them to always bounce back. From 2006 to 2007, Philippine Airlines was named the Airline Turnaround of the Year due to its ability to go from a restructured airline to eventually rise back to profitability. This meant that the company is again a rising contender as one of Asia's leading airlines. The consistent recessions and economic challenges were enough to harm their overall company, but none of them were enough to lead them to liquidation. Its share price, which reached a low of about 50 cents a share, bounced to more than 10 pesos a share by 2007. However, the economic challenges did not stop, and they happened again by 2008. By the last months of 2008, the company's share price fell from a high of about 17 pesos in 2007 to less than 5 pesos. The company reported in its fiscal year 2009 that it incurred losses of more than $300 million. Their issues could be partly blamed on the external challenges the world has faced, but they might also be due to a failure in management within the company. By 2012, a new owner had arrived, San Miguel Corporation, one of the largest conglomerates in the Philippines. Signed on April 4, 2012, which led them to acquire 49% of the company, citing that they plan to help Philippine Airlines. Later that year, they immediately announced a $7 billion new fleet plan to purchase 54 Airbus aircraft. Its share price picked up immediately, from lows of 5 pesos to over 16 pesos around 2012. But from the looks of it, they were not really that serious. By 2014, they had immediately exited, selling all of their stakes back again to Lucio Tan. With newly appointed executives once again, the company had to change its strategies. It first deferred its orders from the new Airbus aircraft and changed the entire types of airplanes to buy. Success now would not be difficult to foresee. Which is first of all due to a better economic landscape. The overall demand for air travel was larger than what it was a few decades back. So from 2014 to 2019, it consistently saw the entire company massively grow. 107 billion pesos in sales in 2017 to over 157 billion pesos in sales by the fiscal year 2019. Even Japanese-based All Nippon Airways purchased a 9.5% stake in the company around that year. The largest challenge, however, would come up by 2020. COVID-19 had destroyed the tourism world. Nations after nations closed their borders and demand for air travel disappeared. By the end of 2020, the total revenue went from 150 billion pesos to just 50 billion pesos. The company had no choice but to lay off a number of its workforce. The total current liabilities of the company, which are financial obligations that needed to be paid in 12 months, were nearly 200 billion pesos, or $4 billion. Yet the current assets, which are its liquid money, are only 32 billion pesos, not even a billion dollars. Hence, by May 2021, the company had declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The new restructuring enabled the company to fix its bottom line once again and, by the end of 2021, saw a huge and immediate change. Its current liabilities fell from 200 billion pesos to just 70 billion, and its current assets rose from 32 billion to 59 billion pesos. By 2022, a newly revamped executive team also took place with a new president and COO. Further, as airlines immediately bounced back after the reopening, the company finally posted a net profit of over 4.2 billion pesos in the first half of 2022. And soon after, it finally announced that it had emerged from bankruptcy.
Once one of Asia's leading carriers had fallen many, many times over its lifetime. Despite plans and promises to make it once again a leading company, it had never taken place. But who knows what will happen in the future? Let us know down below. Thanks for watching.